The man hadn't caught a fish for three days, but suddenly bubbles started to form in the puddle. The man felt something was wrong. He stood up and the bubbles in the puddle got bigger and bigger. John turned and ran and with a bang a water dragon came out and opened its mouth and swallowed John in one big gulp. John was drenched by the cold river water and in the cold weather John's clothes were instantly frozen. But when he lowered his head he realized that there was a big fish in his barrel. John was overjoyed. He hadn't eaten meat in months. John rushed back to his home where he chopped wood for the fire and set the table. A bowl of delicious fish soup was the only thing that could keep the cold winter months at bay. But just as John was preparing the ingredients for the fish stew, a woman's voice rang out. John instantly froze in place when he turned around and realized that the big fish in the bucket was talking to him. John was so shocked that he got under the table. He slowly raised his head and the big fish once again said hello to John. John then believed that what he had seen was true. The big fish told John that she was a fish princess in the river. She was tired of living in the water and wanted to go to the shore to feel the human world. And by chance she saw John fishing so she flew into his barrel. As long as John took her with him on his travels, she could fulfill any of his wishes. Looking at the talking fish made John give up the idea of eating her. John put her on his bed and was about to take a rest when the whole house began to tremble. The house slowly lifted up and rose higher and higher and hovered in the clouds. Before John could react, his bed and the fireplace went out of the house. John held on to the stove for fear of falling. I don't know how long it took for the stove to stop. John rushed to ask Big Fish if it was her work. The Big Fish told John that he wanted to take him to the land of magic. As soon as he said that, the ice-covered earth began to melt and everything began to revive, revealing green grass that was thriving, in no time at all. The whole land was green. John carried the barrel to the shore, but suddenly the big fish disappeared. While John was looking around, a voice came from behind him. The mermaid princess came to the human home and she became a beautiful girl. Lisa, she wore a cloak of fish scales that allowed her to swim in the river. Lisa gave the cloak to John and led him into the magic kingdom. Once the treasure was given to the king, he could marry the princess. John couldn't wait to get inside, but before John could explain, the king arrested him. John blurted out that he wanted to marry the princess and had come to present the treasure. But the crowd looked at the disheveled John and took his words as a joke. Before John could produce his fish scale cloak, he was thrown out. After listening to John's story, Lisa decided to take John to find another treasure that would surely win the heart of the princess. Lisa took John on a journey that lasted all night, and after a long time, Lisa stopped. She told John that the treasure was just up ahead and that she was afraid of him and that John would have to convince the treasure to follow him. John came to a deserted place where the temperature had dropped and there were strange devices that made John shiver. While John was looking around, a sound came from behind him. When John turned around, he found a cat demon in a small house. John mustered up the courage to walk over to the cat demon who looked the human man up and down. The cat demon told him that any human who broke in would be his food. The cat demon told him that any human who trespassed would become his food, and that if he didn't give him a reason, he'd eat John. And with that, he showed John his sharp claws. John took out a bottle of liquid that Lisa had given him and the cat demon smelled it and instantly came to him. John handed over the bottle and the cat demon couldn't wait to drink it. That is a delicious liquid brewed from 99 big fish. Legend has it that humans can live forever if they take a sip. John saw this and hurriedly took the bottle back. In order to drink the delicious liquid again cat demon instantly become good behavior even voluntarily into the basket. John rushed back to the kingdom with the cat demon. When the king saw the cat demon who could play the fiddle. He was very fond of it and immediately wanted to marry the princess to John. But the princess looked to John and put forward a condition as long as John can eat endless food she will marry John. John had no choice but to ask Lisa for help. After hearing this, Lisa took John to the forest and they climbed to the top of a mountain. At that moment, Lisa heard a sound. Legend has it that there were two mountain gods who lived on top of a mountain. And they had a precious tablecloth on which there was an endless supply of food. John found them and went down to borrow their tablecloth. Uh -huh. One of the gods took a fruit and threw it at John's head and he fainted. At that moment. Lisa came out and the two were surprised to see her. They didn't expect the honorable fish princess to come to their territory. Lisa changed a bowl of water and asked them to look at themselves. When they saw their own appearance in the water, they were shocked, not realizing that they had become fat. The two were once fearsome mountain gods but now they were fat. They decided to give the tablecloth to Lisa and never eat again to regain their fat bodies. Lisa dragged John out, and John woke up and took the tablecloth to the town. The tablecloth was filled with never-ending food and the villagers clamored for it. John became a hero to the villagers. The king summoned John and was about to announce his betrothal to the princess, but the princess made one more request. She would only agree to the marriage if John would let her see her dead mother again. It was an impossible task and John was ready to give up, but Lisa told him she could help him. Lisa took John to the river and they found a boat. Lisa told John that the rest of the journey would be dangerous because they were going to the underworld to find the princess's mother. The two traveled downstream in the boat and before they knew it, they were in a thick fog. The temperature plummeted. The sky lost its sun and the place became deserted, surrounded by stone statues with scythes in their hands, and the river was white with smoke. Lisa told John to be careful. They were in the underworld. Just then a light appeared ahead of them and the two men hurriedly pulled in. John saw a campfire and tried to warm himself, but the fire felt cold. Just as John was surprised, a dignified voice rang out. An old man appeared at the top of the mountain. 
and any human who trespassed into the underworld would stay here forever. But suddenly Lisa cried out the old man was also surprised to see her. Lisa asked him to help summon the princess's mother. What John didn't expect was that Lisa's words seemed like an order. The old man put away his intimidating state and turned into a kindly grandfather who hurriedly agreed to do so. The old man blew out a breath in front of him and a dead old woman was summoned. John saw the princess's mother and told her what he wanted to do. He wanted to make him agree to marry the princess, uh -huh. but he was refused. It was impossible for an ordinary man to marry the princess. At that moment, the old man in charge of the underworld brought out a plate of delicious cakes that could nourish her body if she ate one. It's a rare thing in the underworld. If she agrees, the food will be hers. Looking at the soul cakes, the old woman had to give in. Meanwhile, the king and the princess were eating, and suddenly the figure of the princess's mother appeared on their plates. She told the king that she had agreed to John marrying the princess, and asked him to prepare for the wedding immediately. When she heard her mother's words, the princess turned around and left. She didn't expect John to do this impossible thing. John and Lisa returned from the underworld and on the boat John thanked Lisa for her help. Lisa told him that John had a good heart and hoped it would last forever, but an inexplicable sadness came over him. After one night, the ship docked and John couldn't wait to get back to the kingdom, but when he turned around, he found Lisa in her fish scale cloak. It was time to say goodbye. Lisa jumped into the water and disappeared. After saying goodbye to Lisa, John ran happily into the kingdom to see the princess. But as soon as she saw him, she ordered her men to arrest him. She didn't want to marry him. John was blindfolded and was about to be executed. Just then, Lisa arrived. Wearing a fish scaled cloak, she gave it to the princess. And if she let John go, the cloak would be hers. And she could swim in the river and be the princess there. After listening to Lisa's words, the princess couldn't wait to put the cape on. But suddenly there was a flash of light and the princess was swept up into the sky and fell into a barrel as a fish. The princess cried out and tried to change back, but Lisa told her that she had already changed her identity. Suddenly the wellhead began to flow out of the water and the river god came out of the water and took the barrel in his arms and from then on the princess would be with him forever. Lisa's chains fell off her hands and she became a normal human girl. John ran over and looked at Lisa and he couldn't calm down. Now that he knew who he had in mind he walked over and put a seal on Lisa's lips. The two of them got on the stove and prepared to go back to their human home and live happily ever after.